you stayed with us and you were absolutely right. We have John Henschel from Raven Tools. Uh, John is co-founder. I'll, I'll leave it everything to him. Okay, John, how are you doing today? Oh, hey, I'm, do I'm doing great. Great. How are uh, you? Oh, oh, not, not too bad. It was a kind of marathon, but uh, never mind. It's great. Great experience and great feeling. Okay, basically, it's all yours. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for everybody who's, who's joining us right now. Uh, I'm John Henshaw. I'm co-founder and president of, of Raven Internet Marketing Tools. And today I'm going to be talking about on-page SEO for mobile, uh, which is something that's becoming more and more important. And one of the things that I'll really be focusing on is making sure that you are future-proofing your site, uh, particularly for Google. There's a lot of advice out there as far as what to do for your site. Uh, but this is, I want to get you into a mindset of where Google might be going next so you can actually uh, make it so that you don't have to make even more changes later down the road. So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. Does that sound pretty good? I'm going to share my screen here. Let's see. Let's see if the technology works. <laughs> okay. All right, I think we're good. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get get going. And and so the uh, first thing that I want to talk about is is what is on page SEO for mobile. What does that mean? And basically, uh, when you think of mobile, mobile is kind of a different beast. And there are different internet connection speeds, kind of like the early internet. And there are obviously different ways of being able to view your content particularly in, on smaller screens. And so when we think about uh, mobile uh, SEO, we think of speed. Is it, is it fast? Is it something that somebody can be out on the street and they can go to your site and immediately get the information that they need? Uh, that matters. That matters to Google. Uh, what is the user experience? Are they going to your site and uh, there's a bunch of ads and they can't see what's going on? Uh, there is the idea of using structured data so that from an SEO standpoint, are you structuring your information so that, particularly if you're an e-commerce site or you're a restaurant, uh, that information is showing up um, in a way that is helpful in the search results, uh, and then device responsiveness. And, and so that basically means, uh, is your site uh, one that is uh, able to uh, respond on a tablet, be it, they're able to see it on their phone, whatever type of phone it is, or on a desktop. And so those are all the, the main things that you need to be thinking about and considering. Now, the best way to approach mobile SEO is the same way that you should be approaching SEO, and that is uh, the idea of if it makes sense to Google. And if we look even just in the recent past, uh, we know that Google cares about security, and there were rumors that they would be uh, implementing some, some type of ranking factor or something like that with SSL, and we saw that they did. And so that was something that was pre predictable and something um, that we could see coming. And so um, if you went ahead and did that early on, then uh, you were already in a good place and you were future-proofing your site in general. Uh, we know that speed is important to them, and we've seen the introduction to their page speed insights tool and, uh, and so that's another example of this is important to them, so therefore you should be doing that, and it has, as of uh, recently, become a ranking factor. And then mobile, we've seen this a lot, particularly in the States. Um, I think they may have pushed that out first, uh, that with uh, mobile, uh, for a while there, they were only showing mobile-friendly sites only in the mobile results. They've actually kind of pulled back a little bit on that, but for the most part, um, Particularly in, in the U.S., when you are using your phone, you're going to see mostly mobile-friendly sites. And so uh, that is a huge ranking factor because if you don't have a mobile-friendly site, then you're not going to show up uh, for those results. And as I think all of us know now, uh, the uh, mobile search is, I think, has overtaken desktop search. And so if you're not there, then you're, you're, you're basically for a lot of people, you're missing 50% of your potential traffic. So what can we assume moving forward? I'm going to cover uh, several things 
um, that we know now that you should be doing. And then in a little bit, I'm going to even give some examples of uh, while Google hasn't come out and said these things are important, we can, we'll be able to assume that those will probably become ranking factors in the future too based on all the things that they've done in the past. So I'll go over that in a little bit. So the first, very first thing that you need to do to get your site um, optimized as much as possible for mobile is make it responsive. It's, it's, it's not even a question. If you have not made your, your site responsive by now, um, you're definitely uh, behind in the game. Fortunately, there are some easy ways for you to catch up. And, and one of those, uh, particularly for those who use WordPress, uh, that I recommend is PDIG. And PDIG is a framework, a responsive framework that's built off of Bootstrap. And that is one um, that works really, really well. And you can make it look however you want. You can create child themes if you're familiar with WordPress and, and building themes. Uh, it's really highly customizable. Uh, that's one of the things I really like about it. Uh, again, it has hooks with those child themes. It's just very, very customizable. Uh, they also make several uh, great plugins, including a uh, social and open, gra open graph plugin uh, that I think you would like. However, uh, my choice, I, I'm a bit, I, I use WordPress a lot, but, but I really like to just hard code everything myself. And so uh, my favorite framework that I use today uh, for doing more of that hard you know, hand coding is Zurb Foundation. And uh, one of the things that's really nice about Zurb is, unlike a lot of uh, other sort of packages, you can actually go into Zurb and you can choose what you want to download and what you don't uh, want as far as what you're going to use in your design and your user interaction. And uh, what's nice about that is that way you can make the site as lean as possible and only have the JavaScript and the CSS that, that you actually need. Uh, the other thing that's nice is, uh, as with most responsive frameworks, they have a really good column system, um, and, and Zurb has a great one too. And so with this custom download, you can actually pick even uh, the, the number of columns you want to have uh, in, in your uh, particular site that you're building. So simple, uh, nestable column system. Uh, the form buttons are great. Uh, it's a lot of times it's hard to find uh, a framework that has nice form styles, and theirs are really nice right out of the box, and even have uh, come with uh, validation built in. Uh, easy to implement mo mobile navigation. So, for example, when you are viewing something uh, on on your phone, you generally will want to collapse uh, and even hide that menu, and you see a little like what we call the hamburger icon. Uh, and so they have all of that built in. It's really easy to use. Uh, the CSS, if you are a web designer like me, uh, is really, really uh, easy to use because it's, everything is named the way you'd expect it to be named. It's all semantic. And so it doesn't take very long at all to essentially memorize all of the different classes. You can build out pages very fast. Uh, and then they have huge documentation. They even have uh, classes that they give. So, so highly, highly recommend Zurb, and of course it is free, which is killer. And if you're an SEO like me, you're into SEO because you don't want to pay for advertising. So it is free, it's a great tool. So the next thing that uh, I encourage everybody to do is to reduce all the things. So, so we're, we responsive all the things, and now we reduce all of the things. And the first place I recommend everybody starts off with is with their images. They're the most neglected things out there, particularly from SEOs. Uh, we uh, did a study of uh, over 200 million page crawls that we did with our site auditor tool that Raven has, and we found that 78% of all the issues were related to images not being fully optimized. And so I'm going to show you um, how to do that, and, and a lot of it has to do with actually reducing the size of the image. Uh, you can do that with uh, different tools. There, I'll go back there. There is uh, a tool called uh, Image Optum um, that is made for Mac, but there are plenty of tools out there um, that, that will do this. Uh, the, the first place I like to start, though, is I like to use SVG. A lot of people don't know that you don't have to use pings and, and JPEGs anymore. Uh, if you have a fairly simple image, something that was done in Illustrator, uh, basically a vector image, you can actually use SVG now, which is essentially text uh, with coordinates. And it's much tinier and much smaller. And the thing I really like about SVG is that not only can you serve a smaller 
image using this, um, but it's also ready for high definition or retina displays. And so if you're using SVG, then uh, you don't have to make multiple versions of a particular picture. It will just automatically scale and, and be high def uh, for whatever screen is viewing it. Uh, so I mentioned in Image Optum is a great tool that will compress those images, and so it supports JPEGs and PNGs. Uh, so here I have an example of compressing a JPEG, uh, save 38.8% of the size, so originally it was like 100 something K. Uh, so you can see it, it significantly reduces your, your images without uh, affecting the actual quality of the image. That's important to state. If you use WordPress, then there's a, there's a great plugin called, I don't know if it's OO or you know, EWWW, uh, and uh, it will do it automatically. And so every time that you actually upload an image, it will automatically uh, reduce the size of the image for you just in the background, and it's all seamless. And so I really like that plugin and encourage you to check that out. Uh, the, the other thing that we can do regarding images is we can create smaller versions for the mobile experience. And so typically uh, what I recommend is I create generally about four different sizes, the sizes that you see here, so 1024 uh, pixels all the way to 360 pixels for the smallest screen. And in that way, you can serve different sized images uh, and even experiences for uh, people to, based on the device that they're using to access. Now, there's a really easy way to do this, and this is, um, it's fairly new in a sense of it just gained um, permanent support from all, the, from all the HTML standard uh, bodies, and so that's why this is just sort of surfacing up now. But there's something called source set, and and what's great about this is be before this, you had to potentially use JavaScript or just come up with a different way to serve a different image based on the device. Um, and sometimes you could do that with CSS too. Uh, in this case, it's actual HTML, just standard HTML, and it goes with the image element. And and so there's a new attribute attribute called source set. And source set allows you to specify um, different images for different screen sizes. And so, for example, um, I, can, I can add, I have cat medium.ping, and, and I've said that for devices that are 640 pixels wide or, or bigger, I want you to show this image instead of the default image. And it also works for uh, high DPI screens. And so, um, I can also say that, oh, if this is a high DPI screen, if I put the 2x after a particular image, that would be my high definition image. Uh, so it's, it's pretty smart and pretty simple. It takes a little more time to put this in here than to just throw in an image. But if you're really trying to optimize uh, for mobile and you really want things to be fast, I really encourage you to take advantage of, of this particular type of code. Uh, another thing you can do with that code is uh, as I said earlier, I create different sizes of images, but it doesn't even have to be the same dimension. It doesn't even have to be the same exact image. Instead, what you can do is, as you reduce the uh, image size, you can also change the content so that it fits the device uh, the best. And so, as you can see here, I have uh, an example of the same content, but sort of reworked for mobile. Uh, and then, of course, uh, a, a much bigger image um, with a little more, you know, design elements like the laptop in there that will show up for desktop. And so um, what that does is the user gets the best user experience possible, um, whether on desktop or mobile. And, of course, if they're on mobile, that image is smaller and it loads faster, which is great. So there is a WordPress plugin for this, and it's, and it's uh, called SourceSet, <laughs> crazy enough. And, and so... Uh, that will help you sort of speed up the process to be able to use this. Otherwise, you, you kind of just have to hand code it, um, which is typically what, what, what I would do. Um, but I've heard good things about this particular one, so you might want to check that out to get started with SourceSet on WordPress. So the, the third thing I encourage everybody to do is structure all the things, and that really has to do with using uh, structured data. And so schema.org is the main one that I focus on. Uh, the reason why I, I focus on that as opposed to um, RDFA or microformats is because um, this is the one that the search engines came up with. So again, if getting back into the mind of Google and where they're going, uh, a pretty good place to be 
uh, is where they are. And if they've made this particular vocabulary, then you probably want to adhere to that more so than uh, another one. And so uh, I'm sure you, uh, many of you have heard of structured data, um, but it is important, particularly in the mobile experience, and be able to have the best um, visual search results for your site. And so here's an example of uh, sites that are using the recipe structured data from schema.org. And so you can have certain images, you can display ratings, you can uh, show the, the amount of calories. Uh, in fact, uh, it, what's, what's nice about it is it will even split up uh, ingredients. And so based on people doing certain searches, if you're using structured data and you're communicating to Google exactly um, what this recipe is made up of, um, then you can even better target your results and have a better chance of being on that first page, or at least the first page on a phone. And so schema is actually pretty simple. It's not too complicated. It doesn't actually change uh, the look and feel of your page. All it does is it puts information behind the scenes that a search bot, search bot reads. And so here's an example of the recipe schema. It's, it's basically item scope, item type, recipe, and then you would um, add different attributes for uh, the data that's already on your page. So it's really just updating HTML without it actually changing what it looks like. Uh, we made a plugin uh, several years ago. It's free uh, for, for WordPress, uh, and it's called Schema Creator. And so you might want to check that out. Uh, it's an easy way to add products and reviews and that type of thing um, using short code. Uh, directly inside of your posts and your pages. And the, this is where the next part has to do with uh, getting back again to where is Google going. And so what I'm about to show you, these aren't things that Google has just come out and said, oh yeah, these, if you use these, you will definitely rank better. However, they fit all the things that we know are important to Google. So. Um, they help uh, provide a better user experience, particularly on a mobile device. Uh, it helps speed things up. Uh, and, it, and it shows that you took the time to actually not throw something together, but make it so that when the user comes there, they, 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 can, do, they can input the data that they need to input. And so with that being said, I, uh, to me, future-proofing a site for mobile is to use uh, these type of... Um, attributes, particularly on forms. And so the example I'm giving here is typically when, some, when somebody does an input field and everybody's had this frustration, uh, you're supposed to put in a number, but, but when you click on that, it just brings up the regular keyboard. Well, if you change the input type in your HTML to number, then it will actually bring up the numbers and special characters instead of the regular uh, letters. Uh, a better example of that is with date. And so if you change input type to date, on a desktop, it's just going to be a regular old input field. But on a mobile device, this is, and this is true for Android and for iOS, it will automatically change it to a date picker. And so you don't get your keyboard, you get the date picker. It automatically does that for you. And so this speeds up the process, uh, makes a better user experience. We know that's important uh, to Google. And then the last one is another good example, which is if you're going to input your telephone, it sure is easier to have the telephone input um, instead of the keyboard. And so when you do type tell, then you get this. So, so I would throw, I, I'm basically throwing out that it is things like this that are going to future-proof your site. If you use these, it's going to be a sign of quality and a better user experience. And uh, whether it ever gets announced or not, I think eventually um, this is going to be something that Google will look at down the road. So. Uh, step four, this is speeding up all the things. And so we've kind of gotten into that a little bit with, with images. Um, the best way to approach that after doing a lot of the things that I've already talked about is to use the Google's own PageSpeed Insights tool. Uh, unfortunately, you're never, ever, ever going to see a perfect score. It's uh, incredibly frustrating. And, uh, but, but I wanted you to see what it looked like. So this is what a perfect score on PageSpeed Insights tool looks like. Uh, it's beautiful, all kinds of green. Um, unfortunately, this is the code that actually got me there, uh, which is um, the top part is me running gzip, compression, and the uh, viewport, making sure that the, the, it basically can scale to the device. 
and then I can't win. Um, that actually was the only thing I've ever been able to do that gave me a perfect score. Um, you can't, the problem is, is that you can't win um, with the tool because pretty much all of us use some type of offsite code. Uh, we, whether even Google's own code that we use gets penalized in their own uh, page speed tool. So you just really can't win. Uh, WordPress plugins will absolutely ruin your day because a lot of the uh, assets that come with plugins aren't, uh, they, they actually aren't optimized. And, and so uh, you can go in and you can optimize them yourself and, and try to do what Google PageSpeed Insights tells you to do. The problem is the next time that you update that plugin, it's going to overwrite that. So that, you'll never win there. Uh, however, it's okay. Uh, you don't need a perfect score. You just need to use that as, as a way to um, uh, kind of measure uh, where you are and the things that you can fix. And so some of the things that you can still do is you can fix your, your size tap targets. And if you're not familiar with that, that's basically the space between links because it also needs to be friendly for a touch screen, not just your desktop screen. And uh, something, this is more for the old school web designers out there like me. If you're like me, in the, in the beginning, you did inline, SEA, inline CSS, which is where you put the CSS on the page, and then it became a no-no. You, you should put your CSS in external files, and that's pretty much what everybody does now. And now, apparently, uh, it's OK to actually do some inline CSS now if it will speed things up, and it doesn't have to make that extra call to another file. And so that is becoming uh, a thing that will, may actually help you um, with the speed of your site, depending on how much traffic it gets. So that is everything. And uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. I'm going to kind of switch here to video, because I think we might have a little bit of Q&A.